So today the Daily Politics is catching up with public advocate Bill de Blasio. So what are you working on and what's on your mind? We're working on making sure that parents have an actual voice in their schools. And I'm a public school parent myself, so this is a very direct personal issue for me. We have just uh, put together a report that shows that the Department of Education has consistently made decisions about schools, where they're going to be, where they're going to be located, these quote-unquote co-locations, without meaningfully involving parents. And that, in many cases, means that these co-locations aren't going to work or aren't going to work as well as they could. We surveyed parents, almost 900 parents across the city, in schools that were in the middle of this co-location process. We found tremendous lack of information uh, that these parents had experienced that literally the main document they were supposed to receive, that was supposed to be the whole discussion template for this process, the education impact statement, the vast majority of these parents didn't even know it existed. And then when you actually look at these things, they're not particularly easy to understand. They're not particularly helpful. They don't talk about the practical impact on their kids. So we are going to be working on this issue uh, for months to come to make sure there's real reforms in the DOE policy and, if necessary, changes to state law uh, to tighten up the fact that there has to be meaningful parent input, community input, and time to actually make changes based on that input. And I know that you've actually been going out into the community right. to listen to what uh, people have to say. What, what kinds of things are they telling you that they're worried about? I think, you know, when you talk about education, you hear very consistently from parents a sense that things could be done so much better if they were actually at the table uh, and a feeling that a lot of decisions are made, very, not just insensitively, but in a way that isn't as effective. Um, and, you know, a sense that there's, uh, it's very difficult to access information from the Department of Education or to play a meaningful role in the Just process. Just to wrap matters. up, uh, what's bugging you personally? What's not working for you in state politics, local politics, national politics? There was, uh, I know you've been outspoken on the stop and frisk yes. policy, for example. Yeah, we, we and here some of the most impressive law enforcement folks in this state. And one of them, for sure, is going to be the top law enforcement official in this state next year. They all said a database keeping the names of innocent New Yorkers is wrong. Now, none of us said we disrespect uh, the police commissioner, for example, for taking the other position. I think we were all very respectful about it and believe that he has a strong viewpoint based on his own experience, but just like we have a strong viewpoint based on our experience. But the tone in some of the um, debate since then, I think, has been a little nasty and um, a little too intense in terms of suggesting that somehow uh, this change is going to lead to, you know, a more dangerous city. I, I think that's so, um, I think it would have been better for some of the folks who didn't agree with me or the governor or the attorney general candidates to say, you know, we respect that position. Here's our fear. We're all going to work together to fight crime but also protect civil liberties instead of taking a position which I think was a little sensationalist. Uh, and drawing some conclusions I don't think hold water. Okay, great. Well, thanks so much for Thank catching you. up with Daily Politics. My pleasure.